All right, man, peace. You know, brothers, I've stated in the past when it comes to this Michael Jordan versus LeBron James quote-unquote debate that Michael Jordan is a Mount Olympus, a Mount Rushmore athlete. What does that mean? That means that his legacy, his mythos, transcends actuality. When you view Michael Jordan, Muhammad Ali, Jim Brown, Wayne Gretzky, Pele, they almost ascend beyond any type of statistical rankings. Nobody cares exactly what they did in their field of endeavor because the aura that surrounds them, the energy that surrounds them is as overpowering as their actual accomplishments. And that's what stops other athletes who are a layer beneath them, who are legends as well, but who are a layer beneath them from ascending to that mountaintop because they are at the mountaintop. Nobody cares that Muhammad Ali lost five times and he does not have the most knockouts or the most victories or anything like that. His mythos makes him a Mount Olympia athlete. Michael Jordan is not the all-time leader in scoring. He has not even won the most world championships, even though if you want to say in the modern era, he's won the most world championships as the star player on his team. Still in all, he's viewed as the greatest ever because of the aura around him. And that trickles down to this very day. And the NBA players recently had a poll in which they were asked to decide who do they believe is the greatest NBA player ever. And this is in today's NBA. They declared that Michael Jordan is the greatest player of all time in the history of professional basketball with a percentile of 79%. And the next highest person, I believe, was LeBron James with approximately 12%. <laughs> Keep in mind that if you're a 30-year-old NBA player today, which is about middle age for professional basketball, that means that you were born somewhere in between 1988 or 1989. So you hardly saw Michael Jordan in his championship years with the Bulls. And you still believe that he's the greatest player of all time over LeBron James. The vast majority of players in the league today are around 25 years old or younger. So they hardly saw Michael Jordan play at all. And the margin of victory for Jordan over the other players that he was competing against, LeBron James, Kobe Bryant, Kareem, is so wide. All it does is once again testify to the notion that Michael Jordan is a Mount Olympia athlete right there with Babe Ruth and these other players who are mythic. It's going to be very difficult for any athlete to overcome that because the effect and the impact that Michael Jordan had not just on the game of basketball, but team sports in America in general was titanic. Well, Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp, who is LeBron James's number one fan, decided that they're going to debate over this topic. So, of course, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. Michael Jordan hasn't played in an NBA game since 2003, but current players still say he's the GOAT. The Athletic asked over 100 players who's the greatest of all time, and Jordan got an overwhelming 73% of the vote. Shannon's guy, LeBron, came in a distant second with about 12% of the vote. Kobe was Wait, third. 12%? 12 percent? Wow. Wait a minute, Sean, that's terrible. 12, what? 12%. Uh, 12? yes. Kobe in third with about 10%. Mm. Shannon. Mm. Are you going to have to borrow Do I now? even need no. to ask? Is it over? <laughs> what color is the headband? Did Jordan ever wear purple? <laughs> so you know who Goat Man is. Kobe? Shannon Sharp is establishing quite a potent cult of personality for himself on the internet and social media through his, <laughs> through his fake ass wokeism and his LeBron James fanboyism. He's gotten a lot of woke Negroes all across the world to, to follow behind him, call him unk and things of that nature. But don't get it twisted. Most of this is an act. Shannon Sharp knows that Michael Jordan will always be considered greater than LeBron James. Stop playing. Oh. Call me. Are you surprised by this, Shannon? No. Hell no. They've been hating on Braun since he was five years old. From the time Braun was five years old, he could dunk on a regulation basketball hoop. Get it? No. Oh. Cause they be hating on LeBron. <laughs> they stay hating. Why wouldn't they hate? He's six foot eight and a quarter, two hundred fifty five pounds of pure, unadulterated Texas chocolate. They know it. <laughs> Today's players are hating on LeBron James. I don't think so. How about this? I think it's very very hard for a player that you're currently playing against, and you call him the goat. I I'm not quite sure if I could agree with that. I believe that most of Michael Jordan's contemporaries were more than willing to call him the quote-unquote greatest player ever. Elijah Bird had no problem calling Michael Jordan quote-unquote Jesus in sneakers or God in sneakers in the aftermath of that game two in the first round of the 1986 playoffs, even though the Celtics defeated the Bulls. 
he still gave him that level of praise, which is idolatry, of course, but he still did that. I don't think that any player today <laughs> would lavish LeBron James with, with that level of platitude. I just think that's hard. And also, what's that play, Skip? All these guys grew up watching Michael, grew up wanting it. No, sir, not quite. <laughs> All these guys did not grow up watching Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan retired from basketball 21 years ago, okay? You have to be at least 30 years old to have seen Michael Jordan in his championship years and 35 years old at the very least to understand the impact that he had at the time culturally. If you had that shoe, you were king. Mm. They all wanted that shoe. A lot of these guys still wear the shoe. A lot of these guys signed with Nike because of Michael Jordan. I'll Let me say this also. It's very clear and obvious to me that the witch coven known as Nike or Nike for the mother goddess of war and victory cast some type of spell on those sneakers which has enraptured and ensnared and allured the minds of the populace at large to the point where i mean they hold this shoe this this, this sneaker up to a level and put it on a pedestal where they're willing to kill other people for it it's obvious that there's some type of witchcraft spell placed on that damn sneaker a lot of these guys know what nike is because of michael jordan so well, there was no Nike really before Michael Jordan. Nike was a runner shoe before Michael Jordan. You know what, Skip? Am I surprised? I am not surprised in the least because, uh, as I say, as I uh, laid out, Skip, you understand, it's hard. I mean, look, you're, you do what you do. Skip, you've been doing this thing for a long time. Ain't nobody gonna give you the credit you deserve. Mm -hmm. because this is a sign of desperation from Shannon Sharp. He knows that he cannot construct a real argument because the modern NBA players did not even really see Michael Jordan play, and they're still voting him the greatest player ever by such a wide margin. So now he's trying to appeal to Skip Bayless's ego. Because you couldn't do it. That was you. Got what was you move away from it? Old Skip Bayless. He started that debate thing. Mm -hmm. Then they're gonna give you the credit because they be, they won't view you no longer as a contemporary. Absolutely. That's like when Old Shea Sharp played tight end. They never wanted to call me the best Skip Bayless, but after I retired. Four or five people mentioned me as the greatest tight end of all time, you know. I mean, most people say Tony Gonzalez, but, you know, shit. I get a mention. When I'm gone, they're going to throw parades. It's over. No parades. You know what? See? No one will every, every, time, every time I turn around, I try okay. to give you a little Thank parade. You, you did. Yeah. That was nice of you. That wasn't. That wasn't nice. That was fake. It was pretentious. It was an attempt to reel Skip Bayless in by appealing to his ego. Nice. And, and player skill. players love scores. They love flags. They love pizzazz. Look at Kobe. Kobe got one regular season MVP. Will Chamberlain got no votes. He got four. Mm -hmm. Larry Bird got three consecutive. He got none. Well, Shannon Sharp, we have to understand something. It's going to be very difficult for a center to ever be considered the greatest NBA player ever. Because, I mean, even subconsciously, people just assume it's easier for them because they're so tall. Now, when it comes to Larry Bird, very few people saw him play. And when you go back and you watch his films, he's not a player who necessarily jumps off of your screen when it comes to athleticism. When you watch Michael Jordan, it's like, wow. Even today, in 2019, people can go back and watch Michael Jordan's highlight package and say, wow. Kevin Durant got a vote. Wait, did, did you notice that? One percent. My guy, Kevin Durant, got a vote. By the time Kevin Durant retires, he's going to be threatening the top 10 greatest players of all time ranking. And he's not even a leader. He's not even an alpha. That's how talented Kevin Durant is. As I've stated previously, he's the most talented pure weapon in the history of the NBA. I wonder who... Uh, I mean, you, hold on. They should have said you're not allowed to vote for yourself. No, just now, hold on. Now, Skip, I'm just let me stop. Because, you know, KD get upset. Can't Skip, it's very obvious that Kevin Durant voted for a damn self. I mean, even when you look at the ballot, the fingerprint on the ballot was from a skinny person. KD did not vote for himself. I was just making slight of that. I do not believe, KD, I do not believe you voted for yourself. KD, don't get upset, please. Me and LeBron need you on the Lakers. I'm just joking. Please don't get upset. I think KD, he wants you to come to L.A. <laughs> that could be a possibility. Yeah, yes. I would be a part of the recruitment team. Yeah. But Skip, no, it's not right. And then this perceived toxicity. Mm. <laughs> I need Shannon to say that again. This perceived toxicity. <laughs> Suffering succotash. Mm. Then everybody keeps harping around. You see what happened, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. But we know who the goat man is. 
gold man, gold man, yeah, that's him. Six foot eight, two hundred fifty-five pounds, sexy chocolate. Shannon Sharp, what? I love you, man, but <laughs> you are fighting a losing battle here. And yeah, Shannon knows it's done. He knows it's done. And this is proof positive. Game over for LeBron James. Absolutely. If the NBA of today, which is populated predominantly by, by kids anywhere from 20 to 25 years old, are going to say that Michael Jordan is the greatest basketball player ever, LeBron is never going to win that argument. Ever. James, the king. The phony goat. Stop saying that. The phony goat. No, he's not. And it, it was. Stop it, Skip. He's the real goat. Bye. It was very telling that the writer of this piece, Sam Amick, wrote, "It's telling that today's players still see such a monumental gap between his Aaronus and King James." A mo because the players of today witnessed LeBron James' performance against Dallas Mavericks in 2011. That's why they witnessed his performance in 2010 against the Boston Celtics when he had that meltdown. They witnessed him get blitzkrieged by the San Antonio Spurs in 2014. They saw him come out onto the dais, onto the podium, after the 2018 NBA Finals against the Golden State Warriors with his wife's black scarf wrapped around his hand. And they said to themselves, this guy is so talented, but, but he's such a damn bitch. Monumental gap. Really? He's still playing. Jordan, according to the vast majority of players we talked to, has no real threats to his throne. Wow. Conclusion. Ball game. Sorry. I, I can't, I've been trying to explain this to you for years now. I agree, Skip Bayless. Now, and let me also say this. Let me give Skip Bayless a lot of credit. Because back around 2010, 2011, I used to think that he just had an unhealthy infatuation with LeBron James. But as the years have gone on, I've realized that he's one of the few truth tellers about LeBron James. Now, and you won't listen. I'm just trying to figure out, Skip, and stop saying that. He's not. I'm just trying to figure out how does... Kareem and Will, the and Bird, they get no love? Kareem got a little love. A little, skip the man. They played too long ago, Shannon Sharp. You know that. Will Chamberlain did not even play in the modern era. His era was competitive or would be competitive with the players of today, no doubt about that. But due to the fact that he played in the 60s and 70s, and the narrative about Will Chamberlain is that he did what he did against mostly little white guys, that takes away a lot from Will Chamberlain's accomplishments in the minds of most modern NBA fans and modern NBA players. Even if a lot of that's not true. The fact of the matter is that the players in Will Chamberlain's era were actually a tad bit taller than the players of the 90s and the 2000s, and maybe even today. The man got more MVPs than Michael. Okay. More points than Michael. 73% to 12%. And by the way, I was a little surprised Kobe got 11%. Yes! I wasn't surprised by that. Kobe's making a lot of headway on LeBron James. Especially due to the fact that LeBron James has decided to try to eclipse Kobe Bryant's all-time legacy while also being on Kobe's team. So that's going to allow people to evaluate LeBron in juxtaposition to Kobe Bryant and say to themselves, his tenure with the Lakers and being placed in an environment like that that's highly pressurized seems to have brought out the worst in LeBron. That's going to be the narrative, even if it's not true. People are not going to consider a lot of the ancillary aspects that are going to dictate LeBron's success or lack thereof while he's in LA. All they're going to care about is wins and losses. Yes. Okay, so he's... Because, because of the flip. Because if you think about skill, one MVP, mm -hmm. name, name a player in another sport that's won one regular season MVP that's in the discussion mm -hmm. for GOAT in the particular sport. Oh. Well, Shannon Sharp, I agree with you, bro. That's why I state I cannot put Kobe Bryant in the top 10 players of all time if, if during his time period he was only recognized as the best player in the NBA one season. I mean, what am I supposed to do with that? Okay. If Usain Bolt had won one gold medal, would he have been considered the greatest sprinter of all time? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. If Michael Phelps had one gold medal, no! Okay. Because Kobe Bryant was not the best player of his era. And a lot of people are not going to like this. I've said this already. Tim Duncan was better than him. It is what it is. Okay. So here's where your argument lost me about how many of today's players grew up loving Michael Jordan. Yes. I don't think that many grew up loving Michael Jordan. Let's just go to today's younger players. Yes. The oldest young player right now to me is the apple of your eye, Anthony Davis. Yeah. Okay, so he was born in 1993. Yeah. And Anthony Davis is on record as stating, even though he's a Chicago native, he's on record as stating that he grew up admiring LeBron James. Anthony Davis 
barely saw Michael Jordan play, if he saw him play at all, especially on the Chicago Bulls. Once again, Michael Jordan retired in 1998. If Anthony Davis was born in 1993, that means that he was either four or five when Michael Jordan retired from the Bulls. And Michael on the Wizards was a shell of his former self. Yes. That means that by the time he was five years old and just becoming aware of the NBA, five inch, four inch, I don't know. He voted for Braun. Okay. But okay, go ahead. Yeah, he but probably did vote for Braun. Would... Yeah, I'm sure he did. And I would agree with that. <laughs> but, but by the time he's. Yeah. I love Anthony Davis. I love the unibrow. He's five years old. Michael is done with his Bulls run, and he is out of sight, where? out of mind for three years. Oh, I'm glad you said that. Can you tell the people at home where was Anthony Davis born? Chicago, Illinois. Okay. And guess where the baby pen was dressed up in? Mm-hmm. Chicago Bulls. And he had on baby Michael Jordan's shoes. And- How do you know that? <laughs> all these are all these are pseudo facts. Come on, Shannon Sharp, knock it off, brother. And a baby Michael Jordan bill. Okay. Then let's go to Giannis. He was born in 1994. You think he grew up loving Michael Jordan? But- no, I seriously doubt it. As a matter of fact, Giannis is on record as stating that his hero growing up was Allen Iverson. Jordan, because by the time he was aware of the NBA in Greece, that, that Michael's in his Washington years, which were kind of eyesore. I mean, he, and, 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 Giannis probably, and Giannis probably voted for Braun. He okay. probably made Braun go. Embiid, 1994. Carl Anthony Towns, 1995. We, we're going to keep going young, 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 young. Jason Tatum, 1998. He was. Well, I guarantee you, Joel Embiid did not vote for Michael Jordan as the greatest player of all time. Joel Embiid is on record as stating that he believes that Will Chamberlain is the greatest player of all time. He was born the year Michael finished his career, basically, okay? Then Ben Simmons, 96, Kyle Kuzma, 95, Lonzo, 97. Hmm. Well, Lonzo didn't grow up li- loving Michael Jordan. Let me ask you a question. Absolutely not. Once again, Lonzo Ball is another player who has stated that he believes that LeBron James is the greatest player ever. Two questions, Skip. If I go hold up a red and black Nike shoe and I ask NBA player, what is this? What do you think they're going to tell me? Okay, but do they associate with how great the player was uh, or just the shoe? He it's got an a... iconic shoe, Skip. maybe more than it's an iconic player in their eyes. I mean, if you think about it, there are only a handful of players that got signature shoes for Nike. Mm-hmm. He was the, really the first. He He's started really the, the only. Stop. Agreed. Thank you, Skip Bayless. To this day, I mean, <laughs> I mean, come on. When you think of the Kevin Durant shoe or the LeBron James shoe or the Kyrie Irving shoe, they pretty much all blend into one another. I mean, look like a damn, look like a damn robot on their feet. Now, I will say this. The Charles Barkley shoe back in the 90s, the Charles Barkley shoe, the Patrick Ewing shoe, they were memorable. The Penny Hardaway shoe as well. Stop it. No, come on. LeBron. Oh, Or LeBron 16. Oh, they ain't like that. No. They ain't like that. I like okay. the Kyrie's too. Okay, well, that's a whole other issue. But that's what I'm saying. But I'm saying, though, Skip, he, see, it's hard to separate Michael Jordan, the basketball player, from Michael Jordan the brand guy no not really because michael jordan the basketball player has more than enough accolades to substantiate the notion that he's the greatest nba player ever the shoes the space jam the all the so because he said skip he he said the platform and skip on top of that you have to understand michael jordan is a witch he's a wizard that's why he played for the wizards i mean look at the man's head the man's head like a crystal ball these young players look at the man's head and they become mesmerized, Skip Bayless. That's why they say he's the greatest ever. That's why they hate on, on my man. That's why they hate on Braun. So it's hard for you to surpass the master, yep. no matter what you do. All these young... As long as you understand that he's the master. Just for you to call him the master, that, that's you essentially saying that everyone else is an apprentice. These young players I just listed in birth dates, birth date years. Do, do you realize they all grew up as their idol being... The new 23, LeBron James. The real. Yes, sir. The real. You know it and I know it. real 23. He's not the real. He's the phony guy. Don't do this, Skip. Stop saying that. The point is, they idolize LeBron. And- <laughs> Shannon's so damn stupid. Playing his character on TV. Talking about LeBron James is the real 23. And there's... The, 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 way, the, the way I see the kids go on the internet today, they're going to embrace their own. They're going to promote their own. So I'm shocked. I, if you had asked me yesterday, how does this turn out? I said, oh, LeBron wins that because too many young players. No, no, no. Yeah. Well, look, in most generations, they want the best athlete of their era to be considered the greatest athlete of all time in their respective sports. That's normally how it goes. So if you grew up in the 80s, you want Joe Montana to be considered the greatest quarterback ever. If you grew up in the 2000s, you're going to say Tom Brady. 
Yep. And, and think about it, Skip. All these kids named, they've, they've been named Jordan. They don't say Michael Jordan. They, Charles Swoops named their son Jordan. Call him up. Can you mind if I name my son after you? Because that's what we... Oh, please. Like, like Michael Jordan needed to give her his blessing. She just wanted to call him so that maybe, maybe he could tell her to come check him out at his mansion and they could discuss it in private. That's why Cheryl Swoops called Michael Jordan up. We're going through, Skip, that the phenom, it was unbelievable. Okay, but that's Cheryl Swoops. She's not a young woman. No, no, I, no. I'm saying okay. is that the phenomenon okay. behind Michael Jordan, Skip, we've never seen anything like this. And we've never seen anything like it since, Shannon Sharp. You know that and I know that, as you would say. Oh, the only thing comparable is Tiger Woods in his apex. Now, you know how Tiger was in the, in 97 and did it had that run to 2002. Yeah, yeah, the Tiger Woods phenomenon, that was close. It's the greatest run of golf that will probably ever be played. And I agree. It's the only thing that it's was close. It's also been 14 years since he won a Masters, which is incomprehensible to yeah. me, but go ahead, since we're on that. So, that's the years? only thing that's com that was comparable yeah. to what Michael Okay. What Michael has been able to sustain, Skip. Yeah. Because normally when the player retired, they didn't make any more shoes. Michael Jordan has made more shoes, more money off shoes than when he played. Okay. That's how you know that there's been a spell cast on them damn shoes. No doubt about it. The Michael Jordan shoes are more popular now than they were 25 years ago. Okay. Shannon, I just think today's players are so enlightened. They're so media savvy that they just get it. And that's why this was 73%. Because they get six championships with six finals MVPs. As simple as that. Six and oh. They get 10 scoring titles to one scoring title for LeBron. They get all defense, first team nine to six over LeBron. They get a defensive player of the year in Michael Jordan. He in the same year that he won the scoring title and the regular season most valuable player award. Don't forget that Skip Bayless. An average 35 points per game. He led the league in steals three times. LeBron doesn't do that. How does three and Michael Jordan also had over 100 blocks in a season multiple times. LeBron James, who's three inches taller, never did that. In six work for the GOAT. Three and six in finals? But here's the it's just, you're disqualified. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sorry. Why did Michael Jordan only get to six NBA finals if he played 14 years? What are you talking about? What's that have to do with it? What's that have to do with the price of tea in China? Now, all of a sudden, what, you want to give LeBron James half credit for getting there? Knock it off, man. He, he got the... Let me see. He let me got see. The six finals in Chicago. Okay, let me see. I'm, let me try this again. Okay, I can do this so I can help you understand. <laughs> Michael Jordan played 14 seasons. Mm -hmm. He only went to six NBA finals. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure out if he's this goat figure, this mythical godlike figure. Why did he only go to six in 14 years? Well, the, Why not every single year? The first problem was he played in the tougher conference. The East was the beast. But he's goat. Okay. Do you know what I well, He rose above it. After he broke through, he just kept going. I don't know if you have not skipped the year. If he hadn't been forced to take two years off, he would have gone to eight I, I, straight. I don't know. I and he would have had eight straight finals MVPs. I don't That's know how great he was. Being on the farm, I know a thing or two about goats, Jenny. Mm -hmm. We had a big one. And he was a. We're we not had... talking about real goats. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Yo, Shannon goes into the most ridiculous, long winded stories on planet Earth. No, 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 We're talking about the greatest goat. of all time. If you're Shannon, real goat. No, Skip, just bear with me, please. On our farm, we had a big old goat. His name was Dusty. And Dusty, you know, Dusty was hung like old Shea Sharp. You know, he loved to run around with the female goats. And, you know, I'm sorry, let's go to commercial. A real goat. And see, yeah, a real goat. And he didn't like anybody on that old bus. Mm -hmm. If another goat jumped up there, pop. Mm -hmm. But so, off they went. Mm -hmm. So if Michael Jordan was the goat, he should have been knocking Larry Bird off that throne. Hmm. That's what he should have been doing. Works. He should have been knocking the pistol before they got old. Do you have any baby goats on your... Yeah, we had some of them. Some of them, too. Okay. Inter I mean, someone's got to step up for the next goat. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, I would like to talk to all the guys 94 on. I think you bring up a good point on who they looked up to, who they were used to looking up to, but it was the people around them because... I, I can't. I can't. I don't care. Nobody say. I can't say you go if I'm playing against you. I think it's. A, yeah, if I'm playing with you, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. I cannot do it. So Shannon Sharp, which excuse is it? Is it that they're voting for Michael Jordan because they can't vote for LeBron because he's their contemporary, or is it because of the sneakers? What's the excuse, brother? It's the Come perspective. On. Kids today think life started on this planet in the year 2000. No, they agreed. Because for all intents and purposes, for them, it did. That's when the quote-unquote aeon of Horus was 
really pushed into the next into the next realm or into the next level. Oh, this thing started. This thing started in 1984. No, no. Oh, guys, LeBron know. had a 75 average, 75 points a season, but his shoe ain't selling like Michael Jordan. Mm, like, what that got to do with anything? Saying. No one said. What does you making up fake parameters have to do with anything, Shannon Sharp? Just give it up, brother. It's over. Who said that? that no one said that. that. You're just making that up. Oh, this- Thank you, Skip Bayless. <laughs> it's so pathetic, man. Grown ass man standing for LeBron James. Because oh, you're losing, and Go. it's okay. Thank you, Skip. Say that again. Say that again, Skip Bayless. You enjoy. I, have to, I can't say this enough. I used to think that Skip Bayless was hating on LeBron James. Now I realize he's been telling the truth the whole damn time. I don't LeBron know. has a 75, average 75 points a season, but his shoe ain't selling like Michael Jordan. Mm, like, what that got to do with anything? Saying. No one said that. that no one you said, said that. that. You're just making that up oh, because you're losing, and Go. it's okay. <laughs> You enjoy that. I don't care what everybody says. Well, we go to my and, and you don't even smoke. So what? What are you doing? <laughs> Why you care about? Skip, what you mean I don't smoke? I've been smoking your ass every day for three years now in these debates. Old Shea Sharp lighting your ass up. Me and Braun, the goats, greatest of all time. I care about what being the goat got going on? A phony smoker. Hold on, you know what? LeBron had that wine, had a good old glad last night. I'm one of sure them good old sticks. Yeah. Me, Braun, Savannah, the kids, we sat back, drank some wine. Yes, I said it. We gave the kids some wine, too. We sat back joking on your old ass. I said, yeah, I got to go back to work tomorrow morning. Light that old white man up. I love it. Uh, I'm sure he did. Wine's good for you, that's what he tell me. Well, not too much of it. They say, I, you know, so if I, me drinking a bottle at night, that bad? <laughs> it's bottle might be a little too <laughs> bad. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, Shannon probably he probably drink a bottle of wine right before the show. You still oh, work so that's why I've been sleeping so good lately. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah. They say wine is good for you, help you sleep. Okay. I wonder why I've been going to sleep for eight hours straight. That's, <laughs> that's what it is. We're switching gears, guys, because oh boy. But anyway, we'll see how this uh, we'll see how this conversation develops between Michael Jordan and LeBron James. So peace.